have a huge watermelon. I am Shamika. If you guys are new to my YouTube channel, then go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and also uh, ring that bell for all post notifications so you know every time I drop a video. So those of you all who are returning, I know it's been such a long time. It's been a long time since I have posted anything, but a lot has been happening. I'm going to catch you guys up, so just stay tuned. we're back so this is the video that i have been needing to record for so long so we're just gonna kick back um get you guys something to eat something to drink and we're just gonna talk about what's been going on give you guys an update but this is essentially specifically the conversation is going to be around water fasting and weight loss and veganism and what the next phase is going to look like coming out of my 42 day water and juice fast as you can probably see and i'll post some pictures around here so you guys can see uh, my transformation even over these last 42 days but also from the beginning of my weight loss journey at 357.7 pounds to 242.2 pounds and that's why I stand right now. So I guys, I will show you maybe somewhere up here um, what that's looking like in comparison so you guys can definitely see. So why I have this huge half slice of watermelon is because today is the first day out of my 42 day fast. And I have already taken a little bite and yes, it is sweet. So we're gonna be eating together while I, you know, check my notes and kind of run down everything for you guys so you kind of know what the update is, how your girl is feeling, what it was like, blah, 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 blah. Is this something for me? Should I do this? Why should I do it? The benefits and everything like that, okay? So, hold on. Let me just... Listen. Oh, did y'all see that? <laughs> oh, my God. Mm, it's seeded, y'all. That water is my turtle tank. Pretend that you do not even hear it, okay? Mm. Okay. Y'all, I'll get something to eat. Okay, let's get into it. I had a few bites. So first of all, the weight loss. So from May 14th to just yesterday, which was May 25th, I mean, excuse me, May 24th. I don't know if y'all can see that. I don't know if you can see, but anyway. Um, okay, anyway, today is May 20, uh, May 20, uh, June 25th. Yesterday was June 24th, which was the last day, the 42nd day of my water and juice fast. Okay. Now, I've lost 48 pounds. I want to say 50 pounds just because that sounds much better, but I've lost 48 pounds since May 14th. That's been six weeks, and that's a lot of weight. So at first it was a lot of water weight, and I'll tell you guys, I, I skyrocketed back up to like 291, 291.2 or something like that. And from like February to May when I started. And that had a lot to do with, um, I was just feeling a lot of sadness for some reason. And I was like, man, what's going on? I was very frustrated, very agitated. And I realized that I was still grieving. If you guys don't know, um, I've done some, you know, like little webinars with other people talked about how I lost my mother last year and I was kind of coming up to the anniversary of her one year, uh, the one year anniversary of her death. So I was really going through a grief cycle, didn't realize what it actually 
that it was actually that, right? And um, so I was just eating, y'all. Like, I'm a vegan, but you all know that there are unhealthy vegans, right? There's unhealthy vegan foods, and I was on that. Um, probably for like two months straight, you know? So I was kind of maintaining my weight for a couple months, February, March, but like the end of March, April into May, oh, it was, I was eating out. I was hitting my little favorite vegan fast food joints and getting it in. Do you hear me? But I knew I was coming up to my fast, so I was just like, well, you know, I'll, I'll kick it back into gear. But it just felt like, man, I'm just, it was emotional eating because I was just recalling all the moments leading up to my mother's death and then things that I wish I would have done and all that back and forth and stuff like that, right? So that's kind of how I packed on the pounds that, you know, took me up to 291.2 pounds. And um, when I started May 14th, I really needed to submit like to God, you know, all those things I was struggling with emotionally around my mother's passing and really just wanted to elevate. I felt like I had kind of got a little lax with my spiritual my spirituality and read my word, just saturate my atmosphere with like worship and praise and stuff like that. And so that that's always gonna be my, my main focus is not necessarily to lose weight, even though I know that that is a huge part of it and really establishing a new lifestyle um, around that with the knowledge that I was receiving also, um, because along with it, I was, you know, with a fasting group. So it was a facilitated extended fast, um, which I recommend if you're gonna do an extended fast, you wanna get with a community of people Reach out to me, put it in the comments down below. Hey, help me out, Shamika Jones, can I get that info? Put it in the comments below and I got you, right? Because you don't wanna do this by yourself. So let me just tell you all how I feel. I feel lighter, mentally clear, more emotionally grounded. Like I might have my days where yeah, I cry, I think about my mom. Like yesterday was truly emotional because I just came to the point where I was just so proud of myself because this is my third I know as a lot of time has passed this is my third 42 day fast this is not the first time that I've done this and so from the first time that I actually fasted it was really hard on my body like I hadn't really conditioned my heart a lot because I really wasn't working out a lot or eating a lot of greens up until the fast um, so I had heart palpitations. I was really, really weak. Even though you're gonna experience some weakness, it was extreme. I was I experienced some extreme weakness. Um, but the I was thankful because I was still working from home. So I really, you know, I could rest during the day if I needed to. What made it different from this time is, if you guys don't know, I'm a teacher, right? So I teach in um, uh, Chicago, right, the inner city. So I had to go to work, right? We were asked to come back to work um, into the physical building. And so I had to do that. So in terms of a physical, um, from a physical standpoint, it was much harder for me uh, to get up every day, especially when I was just on the water. So, um, but the, I was thankful because I was still working from home. So I really, you know, I could rest during the day if I needed to. What made it different from this time is, if you guys don't know, I'm a teacher, right? So I teach in um, uh, Chicago, right, the inner city. So I had to go to work, right? We were asked to come back to work um, into the physical building, and so I had to do that. So in terms of a physical, um, from a physical standpoint, it was much harder for me uh, to get up every day, especially when I was just on the water. So let me just share what the process was, right? So the first three days is a dry fast. So you can do a hard or a soft dry fast. So let me explain to you all what that means. So a soft fast, is, a soft dry fast is you can actually take a shower where water can touch your, you know, hit your body or whatever. And so because the fast started on Friday, May 14th was a Friday, I was going into the building. So of course I was gonna take a shower. It's okay for you to also wash your hands and brush your teeth. A hard dry fast, which I did for the previous two fasts, but not I only did it for two days, right? Because Friday I did the soft dry fast and Saturday and Sunday I did the hard dry, which means no water can touch your body, okay? No water at all. So um, I did not brush my teeth. <laughs> 
and the only thing that I did was wash my hands after I did my bathrooms, okay? So I know I don't wanna talk too much about this because we're eating at the same time, right? Um, and then after that, the three uh, day dry fast, you start your 21 day on alkaline water. It's all water. I typically got in about a get three quarters to a gallon of water each day. And I did pretty good this time. Um, toward the end, it was much harder because your stomach shrinks so much. Some days I was just like, man, I just can't do the water. You have like sometimes this, this funny feeling in your mouth. Uh, just it, it tastes weird. It just tastes so just weird. So you kind of want to brush your teeth more times than not throughout the day if you if you if you possibly can. So most times I would probably just do it twice a day. I had some weakness of well actually a lot of weakness in the beginning. Um and I also but what I didn't have was any heart palpitations this time, which was really, really good for me because I had been working out consistently leading up to um the day of the the fast. So that was really good for me. Um, I made sure that I kind of tuned in with the higher power of God and everything. Um, did my prayers, not every day, but it was even worship or it was prayer because I felt if I had, you know, presented something and spoken to God about something, it's just like, you know what, God, I'm just going to leave that with you. And I'll just bask in, you know, just worship and praise and just in his presence and reading my word. So, um, that was you know the, the process that was kind of what i did and so um at day 25 right which then transitioned into the live juices it was either green juice it was a beet juice or it was a citrus juice um and so the green juices would keep me strong because those are the builders the fruit juices would continue to cleanse me and get rid of that inflammation because it's either gonna be some turmeric or ginger and turmeric and ginger are very, very good um, foods to help reduce inflammation. And I've even, you know, I gave a testimony on my Facebook page. People didn't know that I was fasting at the time unless I actually told them, which was typically people who were close to me or some extenuating circumstance where like someone wanted to take me out you know, to dinner or friends or something like that. And I'm just like, hey, listen, you know, this is what's going on. So I'm not able to do that because of this, you know. So those were really the only reasons that I would actually uh, share that information with people. Because typically this is a private experience. It's for you to kind of get in tune with you, um, your, your spirit man, your body, listening to the things that are going on inside you and your mind to ground you as you elevate and heal you. And so one thing that fasting has also given me is to cure what's called the hunger spell, right? And part of my background was that I had a serious food addiction. Um, you could probably call me a binge eater and I would eat my emotions and anything that was soft and carbohydrate rich um, I was eating it, right, to soothe um, a part of me that, you know, was, was pained by something. Um, because I really wasn't a big talker. I really didn't like sharing my feelings with people just because I didn't trust people like that. And so when you, um, I just know, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm We're going to eat and talk at the same time. This is my first meal. And it's like my first meal. And it's y'all see that 7.22. Wait, too late. Um It's so sweet. And I'm so glad that I got a seed watermelon jewels on sale for $5.99. Mmm. 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 
Oh my God. Y'all. Oh. It's so good. Now hear me. Mm. Okay. So I never took care for tomorrow. I always thought about the day. That helped me so much because I was always someone who was like, well, what's gonna happen later? If I do this now, what's gonna be the consequences? Da -da 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 -da. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't anticipate how what the outcome of something should be, but I don't but for me, how my mind works sometimes it's it's it was it was it was excessive. Where I couldn't even enjoy the actual moment that I was in or just embrace the moment that I was in. And so what it helped me to understand and learn is just to be in the moment. Be in the moment, win that day, do what you need to do for that particular day, whatever that thing is. And also, guys, this translates to other areas of your life. And sometimes what I had to be forgiving of myself is not to think that I had to do everything that I have going on in my life um, right away right? Life happens in phases and stages and levels. And guess what? What I see in my mind in terms of what I want to do in my business, right? My business is, guess what? God might only want me to address this one thing right now in this season. Not, not that I'm giving up on the others, but for now in this season, that's what I need to do. Also serve God first, myself, and then others. Now, I've learned this just in over the course of my weight loss journey. I've had to. I had to completely change my mind. And when I first said it back in 2018, when I wanted to do this thing, when I said I do not want to go into another year being this size, this, this fat, this big, this obese, I did not want that. I said, God, you're the only person that can help me. I tried everything on my own. I have all the knowledge. I know exactly what to do. I know how to work my body. I know how to do um, or put together a nutritional plan for myself. But I need you. And I don't know if I've ever included you. I felt like I have. But I'm telling you, I'm not even doing it without you. Whatever that means and whatever that looks like. I know this might not be for somebody else or whatever the case may be. I don't always like talking, you know, religion and stuff like that or even spirituality with certain people. But this is, I'm telling you, this is my story, right? So, you know, if you want to hear somebody else's story, you can go <laughs> to their page, okay? But I love you guys being here with me. I really do. Um, and then through doing that, God showed me how to love myself. Like I thought I knew how to love myself, but I was hugely neglecting a lot of parts of me to the point where I wouldn't even include myself on my on the list that I had to address everything else. But Shamika wasn't on it. And so when I realized that, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Okay, just like I put this in my calendar, if, the, if my life is set up to where it's busy like that, then I need to put my own self on the calendar. And I was just having this conversation with a friend of mine, and I'm just like, you know what? I plan dates. Like I get my nails done. Oh, we set the date before I actually leave. So I have my date in my calendar for my next nail appointment, right? I said and promised myself this year, every month, I'm getting massages. Guess what? When I leave my massage therapist, right? I went this month already. I booked my next appointment for July, which is in a couple of weeks, right? So that's something that I do for myself. Every year, I plan trips for the following year because I said and promised myself that I'm taking at least one trip for leisure a year because I will always go on business trips. But it never, uh, it never really felt like I could play along with 
um, you know, being at my business conferences and stuff like that. Because you're always kind of, you have to switch on and off. I didn't want to switch on and off. I just wanted something that was, was for leisure and leisure only. So that's what I did. You know, that's what I did, guys. And it's working out for me, right? Because then when I can serve myself, I have enough energy. I have enough stamina. I have enough wherewithal to help somebody else. Like I have more to give someone else because I've restored myself. The human body is a beautiful machine. Of course, you know, through my collegiate studies, I studied the, bi the, the, the body and everything that it can do. But really to get into the, the health part of it and how foods can truly heal the body, my experience has mostly been how to manage disease through food. But how to heal the body through food was kind of like a missing link in terms of my studies, right? So learning how foods can actually heal the body naturopathically has been very powerful. How we can continue to cleanse our body and the cycles of time that you need to do that. Because we think, I'm 41 years old, right? So we think, okay, in a year or two, oh, I should be done with my weight loss. Um, journey and in maintenance and you know i can enjoy some of the luxuries that i can't enjoy now right because i've given up like wine or and alcohol and all of that type of stuff and i've completely devoted myself to healing my body but i had to think about this right two years over 40 something years of me living unhealth unhealthily with inconsistency that just doesn't that doesn't even make logical sense it doesn't make logical sense at all right so I had to think about what's well, going to take some time when we talk about pure health, health and wellness, what that looks like, because it's beyond me just losing at this point, 120 pounds, 100, 110 pounds now, almost 120 pounds. Let's just say that, right? It's beyond that. What am I putting in my environment? What's in my environment? What am I watching? What am I listening to? Who am I around? What's my environment like? You know, how do I feel when I wake up in the morning? What are my self-care practices? It's all of those things. And it takes a while for you to establish a lifestyle just like it took me all of my life to continue to eat unhealthily, to be around people who were not good for me, to not establish an environment that was gonna be healthy, healthy for me, right? So those are just some things that I needed to think about. So spiritually, physically, emotionally, guys, I'm looking at my notes, right? Um, mentally, psychologically, what do you need? What did I need? I had to think about those things from my meditation to my prayers for working out in the morning to knowing that sometimes because I had to establish my life this way, a lot of people weren't going to be doing it with me, period. There are many people who they're not getting up at four, four o'clock in the morning to get ready excuse me guys, <laughs> to work out at five o'clock in the morning. They're just not gonna do that. You know, very few people will do that. Even when I get up and I go out to the track sometimes, it's not as many people there as it is at six o'clock or it is at seven o'clock. By that time, I'm, you know, at home, but I can only imagine. And even, even in the afternoon, oh my God, most people are probably out if they, you know, don't have to go to a job or something like that. Fasting help you to kind of rise above the chaos. It's almost like, I want to say that you elevate into like a cloud like or you go into what's called a cocoon and it's just you in there you're the caterpillar and it's just you in there and god's gonna do a mighty work to kind of to to perfect you right until it's time to emerge into this beautiful butterfly that's the analogy and that's what fasting does it keeps you surrounded enveloped right and protected so that the outside world can't really touch you or affect you the way it would if you were eating food. Because eating food kind of grounds us. It keeps us level to the ground where we're kind of intermingled with the world and we're negotiating the world as everybody else would. But fasting really elevates you in a lot of different ways. So that's one thing that fasting has taught. Um, and also I have everything that I need to overcome. I kind of came to that realization um, a while ago, but through fasting, it just really solidified because when I thought about doing a 42 day fast, guys, I'm like, a 42 day what? I, I, I don't know whether or not that's for me, but 
just like I told the group last night when we had our final call, I said, you think that you made this decision. You didn't make this decision. You were called to this decision by something beyond yourself, right? That's something for me is God. He led me to this. And so I have embraced it. And so now it's going to be a part of my lifestyle where I can continue to regenerate myself, continue to build myself, continue to, to face my weaknesses so that they can then become strengths. And that was very important to me. Um, also that my journey influences other people's ability or even their decisions to do things for themselves. It is powerful. And I'm, I tell a lot of people like, I'm not necessarily someone who's going home on posting a whole lot. I'm not. But when I get the inboxes from people who are encouraged by me, I almost feel obligated or responsibility to showcase my wins, right? Because when I first did that, it was really just accountability for me. Okay, Shamik, if you put this out there, guess what? You want to see a result? You put you put it out there, so then now you're going to have to come behind that with the result. And I did that for accountability for myself. It didn't have anything to do with anybody else. This was all about me, right? And I embraced the journey. You see that? You know what I'm saying? I embraced the journey, period. Um, so that's a powerful thing. And then also, like I was telling you guys about self-care, self-care is essential to your own health care, right? Because you can be your own doctors. You can be your own health care workers, okay? By the knowledge that you gain through the foods that you that the foods that you know provide, you know, richness like watermelon. Um, and we're gonna talk about why I'm choosing to do all watermelon, right? Because that's the next step for me. And so it's part of my health care plan. I've created my own health care plan. I need to wait on an allopathic doctor to tell me that. I don't even have to wait for a naturopathic doctor to tell me that. But through the, the knowledge and the life that I have created for myself, I know that this is going to be the most amazing life that I will have from this point forward as I move into the next half of my life. I intend on having a great quality of life, right? And so moving out of the fast, which is my first day, which is why I'm eating watermelon. Mm, 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 mm. mm y'all, it's sweet, hold on y'all. Before we get into it, let me get into this. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. One thing I don't like is the seeds do get in the way, but because I see seeds, I know it's close to real. Oh. Mm. Seeds, y'all. <laughs> so, mm. oh my god, it's so sweet. Oh, it's so sweet. Mm. Okay. So let's talk about next steps, right? Breaking my fast. So a really great way to break fast is with mono fruit. Mono meaning one kind of fruit. Watermelon, grapes, mangoes, oranges are really great foods to break a fast with, okay? So I decided to do this. I'm gonna do it for at least the first seven days. Um, I'm going to drink my green juices and stuff. I had a green juice earlier today. So, and I think I'm going to do like a little special video for people who, um, 
just want to see me eat right <laughs> a watermelon we'll do something like that maybe tomorrow or whatever and i'll post it up for you guys uh because it this is so sweet i got the other half and i'll probably eat that other half tomorrow but um watermelon is so water rich it's over 90 percent water and i probably don't even have to drink water my alkaline water because this is truly hydrating okay so water rich foods truly hydrate at the cellular level okay at the cellular level most water that we drink will hydrate you at the atomic or molecular level okay that's a distinction okay with that and so this is why people can who eat a lot of fruit probably don't drink a whole lot of water um they don't have to really be honest with you but this is a way to do it okay some people can break their fast with water rich um you know other fruits and vegetables like zucchini just your lettuces your soft lettuces um tomatoes but you kind of want to be careful with uh, some of the cruciferous vegetables because they can cause some digestive issues because they produce um like gases and stuff like that and <laughs> that just a track could be a little bit more harsh so you guys this is my method this is what i'm doing this is why i'm doing it. it's going to be easier on my stomach i'm taking really slow so i'm going to eat this really slow i don't know if i can eat it in all one sitting but i just kind of want to enjoy and celebrate <laughs> celebrate my first day eating food out of my 42 day um 42 day water and juice fast i'm so excited um from now forward i typically try to do two-thirds the two-thirds method with being high raw vegan um so what that means is um two of my meals would be completely raw and then maybe a cooked meal my cooked meal would be at dinner um i'm completely fine with having a full day of all raw fruits and vegetables i've done that before but i'm always going to have in the back of my mind about the two-thirds rule which is two meals raw one meal um cooked possibly and i also do intermittent fasting so i typically do not eat before 12 and i'm thinking about um the 16 8 method probably would be good for me especially as we're going through um the summertime because you know i'm gonna be hanging out with friends and stuff like that so um being able to have an eight hour window to actually enjoy myself and eat and essentially it keeps my body in a fasted state for 16 hours while i'm eating for a duration of three hours not i mean excuse me eight hours not all eight hours but i have a window of eating time uh for eight hours so that's what i'm gonna do guys that's what i'm gonna do um just be looking for uh, more pictures, more before and afters that I'll probably post as this video goes out. But listen, thank you guys for hanging out with me. And again, if not, hit the subscribe button. Go ahead and join the family. Hit the subscribe button and like this video. If you guys want to see me eat or make anything um, as I move into my um, high raw menu and foods then just put that in the description below or the comments below and guess what i'll put that on my menu hey you want to see something hey shamika what does a raw vegan lasagna look like girlfriend or raw vegan uh tacos or whatever the case may be put that down and have you ever thought about going vegan i want to know have you have you have you does it seem like it's a hard thing to do because to me it's much easier now. It's much easier now. Anyway, put that in the comments below. I want to know um, because maybe we can help each other out on this journey, okay? But thank you guys for joining me. And those who are returning, I'm, I would love to see you again. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.